Welcome back to church. And those of you that are watching on video, excuse me, digitally, welcome to Victory Online, where you're concerned, from Chattanooga, Tennessee. So we're going to have a, have a big time this morning. I shared with you last week that um, I was going to finish up what I had been teaching on uh, as far as a look in the mirror. Um, that statement was a little premature, so uh, we're going to kind of be continuing in that vein, but I have named it something different so that it looks like it's something different. It, it, it's, uh, today is Renew Your Mind for those of you taking notes. Now, as we're getting started here, uh, I, want to, uh, I want to address something, and you know, back years ago, I'm talking the 1700s, a lot of instruction, a lot of news, a lot of uh, direction was given by churches during that period of time. And churches addressed the issues of the day. Um, now we kind of try to be politically correct and things like that, which I, I would like to see the church certainly having more of a voice in things that are going on. And, and there's something that I want to address this morning as we're getting started. It actually ties into what we're talking on today. But with the past week with... Uh, George Floyd uh, up in uh, Minnesota and, and then uh, two other incidents before that with uh, Ahmaud Aubrey and Breonna Taylor. These are things, these are events that have happened in our society and with those families that are, uh, are horrible things that have happened to those people and to those, to those families, those communities. And... Without politicizing it, we, we, you have to be careful not to do that. From the things that I have seen, and, and here again, I, I obviously wasn't there. I don't know anybody that was there. But the things that I have seen, the videos that I have seen, there was no justification whatsoever uh, in, in any of those incidents. And as a matter of fact, anybody that I have talked to, and this also has to do with some law enforcement, law enforcement personnel we have law enforcement officers here in our church uh, I don't know a one of them that condone what it is that occurred it was a grievous tragedy of the highest order in each one of those events especially this past week with George Floyd now one of the things that I want to share with you about this is you know I, I can remember growing up in the late 50s and early 60s and there were certainly challenges in our country during that period of time racial tension was at a was at an all-time high in, in my lifetime but judging from the things that have occurred this past week we still have quite a ways to go now i understand and you've got to be careful about this i i i, I hear people you you have to be careful about categorizing a particular group of people and in, in referring to a particular group of people as a stereotype. And that's that I'm talking about anybody, any any group of people. And you have to be careful those people or they always you you've you've got to to get things like that out of our vocabulary. So one of the things that happens in this is is there are those that try to take advantage of situations like this. And yes, there is a side of this that has been politicized. And I actually think that that takes away from the severity and the importance of what it is that's occurred. I heard this statement or, or some uh, variants of this statement many years ago. I don't know who came up with it. But the way for you to change the world is by changing your world. You can't change the world. You can't change what other people think. You can't start off there. The place that you have to start off is the way that you think. You're, you're in charge of you. You're responsible for your world. So if you're going to change or influence those people around you, if you're going to, it always amuses me when I see, I'll see athletes. We just wanted to show the world. That, listen, sunshine, the world isn't watching you, okay? You know, there's, there's a few people in the location. These things, these instances that have happened this past week, yes, there are, th this has a broad scope of people that this is influencing. 
So we as believers and also our, our church is a racially diverse church. And I'm, I'm, we, we are very pleased with that. We desire that. We've always desired that. So it's up to us to be able to be the ones that set the example. It's up to us to be the ones that walk in the love of Christ, that we allow the love of God that's on the inside of us to shine with other people. So our reaction towards things like this is very, very important. Be careful that you don't slip over into stereotype yourself of condoning or trying to justify this, this, the horrible behavior that we have seen last week. And, I'm ta- and, and, and now then the reaction to it, I'm talking on both sides of this. Walk in love where these things are concerned. Be, be a, an ambassador of the Lord Jesus influencing those that are around you. And as we find, we do this every time we do communion over 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And that is, let a man examine himself. So examine things on the inside. It's up to us to be the ones that set that example. So I want to encourage you with that this morning. And you'll see, actually, as we're going through what we're talking on this morning of how this applies to what I've shared with you here. And I would like for you to turn with me in your Bibles, please, to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Now, it is very likely that your Bible may fall open here. We've been going to this verse of Scripture so much here lately. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, we want to start reading here in verse 17. It says, now the, now the Lord is a spirit. Now, I want to remind something of you. Have, have I mentioned to you, I, I probably haven't mentioned to you in the last week or two, uh, have I mentioned to you about the four pillars, that there's four things that are really important for you to know? I, I, those of you in here are grinning because I say this a lot. But one of those four pillars is the fact that we are a three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. And I want you to notice in this verse of Scripture, it says, Now the Lord is a spirit. Also in the Gospels, it says, Now the Lord is a spirit and must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. The way that you communicate with God is spirit to spirit. So we, we have to learn to develop that. And this is one of the things that this is talking about. Now the Lord is a spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And we have looked for the last several weeks at the fact we we have focused in on this about looking into the mirror. We look into the mirror of the Spirit of Liberty. We look into the mirror of the Royal Law, which we're going to look at here in just a moment over in James chapter 1 and chapter 2. And so we, we also find by looking into the Word, As we look into the Word, we are transformed or changed. And remember, this word transformed here is the Greek word that we get our word metamorphosis from. So it means a complete change, a total change in a person. But I want you to look at something else here in this verse. We looked, uh, if you look back up several verses, in the first week we read this whole context, but it's, it's talking about when Moses was in the presence of God, and when he came down off of Mount Sinai, his face shone, with the glory of God to such a point that it scared the people. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, one translation says that his face shot out rays. So it was, it was like, you know, like if you, if you get a, 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 a child to draw a picture of the sun, you know how they'll draw the circle, uh, you know, and they'll, they'll, they'll color it in yellow, and, and then they'll have little, little shoots that got little rays that go out from it. Well, I just kind of get that picture. Like when he, you know, there's, there's just rays of the glory of God because he'd been in the presence of God coming. And it scared them. They didn't like looking at it. So they, they put a veil. Moses put a veil over his face. One of the things that I want to look at this morning that I believe also applies to what we're talking about. One of the things is that when we look into the mirror, and remember that mirror is the Word of God. That as we look into the Word, this is a special mirror. Instead of it reflecting back to us what we really are, that mirror is the standard. And we, as we look into that, we're the ones that actually change. We start changing into that particular image. Into Actually, I want to share this with you. Do you know that you will change into the image of whatever it is you behold? If you look on bad things and you associate with bad things... There will be a transformation where that is concerned also. We'll start transforming or changing into that particular image. Have you ever heard the expression, 
you're going to become like those that you hang around. You ever, you, you, your mom or your daddy ever told you that? Or actually, particularly your grandparents. So you, that's usually a grandparents thing right there. Uh, I, I remember my grandmother used to tell me that all the time. She'd always talk about my friends and what kind of friends I had and how important it was that I hung around the right kind of people. And I just thought she was so silly when I was little. But as I grew up, I realized, you know, I just, it's kind of one of those things. The older that I got, I realized she got smarter. The older I got, she just, I don't know how that happened, but she just got smarter. But she would, she would say things like that. Uh, so you're going to become like those people that you hang around. You're going to become like those things that you spend time giving attention to. You're going to become like the thing that you're using for your standard or your mirror. That's why it's so important to use the Word of God, the Spirit of God, the, the royal law, the law of love. Now, the unveiled part, this is what I want to, uh, to kind of focus in here for just a moment. We haven't looked at this particular part. One of the things that you have to do where this is concerned is, when you look into that mirror, you have to remove the veil off of your own face. You can't look through it with a veil on your face. You have to be just bold-faced, honest with yourself about where you are. About where you are with your relationship with the Lord. About where you are with your relationship with other people. A lot of times, we look into that mirror and we have a veil. We, we, we perceive ourselves differently than what we really are. As a matter of fact, James talks about it. We'll look at it here in just a moment. So it's really important for us to get a good feeling. It's important for you to be honest with yourself. It's just when, when, this is just when it's you and God. When you're spending time praying, when you're spending time fellowshipping with the Lord, listen, there's no need in trying to fool Him. There's no need in trying to present yourself to Him as somebody that you're really not. I mean, come on, do you, do you realize how, how silly it is to try, when, when you're in the presence of God, to try to act more spiritual than you really are? I mean, do you think he can see through that? Well, of course he can. Now, you may fool other people, but you don't fool him. Now, let's go ahead on over. I've, I've been saying this for a few minutes. Let's just go on over to James chapter 1, and we can kind of tie this together uh, with what I've been talking about. Over in James chapter 1, now this is, he's talking here, um, verse 22, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. That is, what, that is James' version of what I'm talking about with the veil. And that's what happens sometimes with people is they hear the Word. If you've gone to church here for any length of time, you've heard the Word a lot. You've heard enough of the Word to cause faith to come in your heart to help you walk in victory in every area of your life. So we hear the Word and hear the Word. But what happens is, is if, we, if we hear the Word and then we don't put it to practice, we're not doers of the Word, and James is talking about we deceive ourselves. That's his version of we're looking at this with a veil over our face. And that's why sometimes people have faith disappointments. They thought that they were believing God for something. And what happened is it's because they knew what the Word says. They just weren't putting it to practice in their life. They knew what the Word says, but instead of operating in faith, they were operating in hope. They just hoped that somehow magically... This was going to work. But how many of you know the Word of God is not magic? It's far better than that. <laughs> it's far more dependable than that. It's far more assuring than that. It works, but you have to put it to practice. You have to speak. That's the first step. You have to speak, talk about what it is that you know, what the Word says, what it is that you're believing for. So that's what James is talking about here. So, verse 23, For if anyone is a hearer of the Word and not a doer, He's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. So this is what he's talking about. This is you behold yourself in a mirror and you walk away. And when you walk away, you forget what manner of man that you were. Verse 25. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in whatever he does. Now over in chapter 2, if you just flip over there in verse 8, it says, If you really fulfill the royal law according to the Scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you do well. So the royal law that he's talking about here over in chapter 1 is the law of love. Listen, walking in love is very important. We have a love confession that we, do, we, we actually put it up on the screen. 
a few weeks ago. You've probably had the little cards that you have in, in, in the front of your Bible. I have one in mine. And that love confession, that royal law of love, that's what we're supposed to become. That's, that's part of the mirror that we look into. To become that person. So you, you speak that word. You say that word over yourself so you become that person that's not easily offended, that's not touchy, fretful, resentful. You remember that, that part of that? And, and so you learn to do that as you hear that. And, and what happens is, see, the Word of God is so powerful. The Word of God is, is, is alive, and it'll help you. And so when you get into situations, and all of a sudden, do y'all know what I'm talking about when I say you feel yourself getting spooled up? Do y'all, do y'all know what I'm talking about? But You can just kind of feel, uh, uh, you know, something happens, somebody says something, somebody does something. And you can just kind of feel it. And, and all of a sudden, it's like you can feel your fingers start heating up a little bit. And then all of a sudden, you kind of get flushed in your face a little bit. And, uh, uh, you, you, and, and, and I mean, if it gets to getting too bad, you can, almost, you can feel your pulse in your fingers. You can feel your, you, I mean, you, 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 your, 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 feet, your hands will start throbbing. And, you, and, and your ears, your ears will go get red and start getting hot. Yeah. It, some of you are shaking your heads. You know exactly what I'm talking about, don't you? That's what I'm talking about when I'm saying you're getting spooled up. You can feel yourself starting to get angry, and, 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 and you're, you know if this continues, I'm going to lose it. I'm, and you're going to catch all of this. So that's a really good time to remember, I take no account of a suffered wrong. I believe the best of every person. I am not touchy or fretful or resentful. See, that, that's, that's the time. And what will happen is, is if you spend time looking at that in the mirror, if you spend time looking at that law, then when you get into those situations, that's what will come to your mind. That's what will that's come out, and that's the way you'll react. And how many of you know that you're going to have a more harmonious outcome if you reflect what the Word says as opposed to what your emotions want to do, right? So that's what, this, that's what James is talking about here. Now I want to look at something uh, that also bears this out today over in Romans chapter 12. So I want you to turn with me please to Romans chapter 12. And uh, we're going to start looking here in verse 1. Now remember, Romans is a, is a very interesting book in our Bible. Romans, the letter to the church at Rome, this particular church is a church that the Apostle Paul did not start. But he has gone his way to Rome, and before he arrives and before he is received by the church at Rome, he pens a letter to them that just kind of addresses Bible doctrine, because when he arrives, he wants to kind of make sure we're on the same page. So that is why the book of Romans is such a good book in our Bible to be able to get Bible doctrine from because that's what he's doing. That's the purpose of why it was written. And that is why in the book of Romans you find so many different things addressed because that's what he's that's on purpose. That's what he's doing. And so this is one of those things actually in Romans chapter 12. If you'll recall, Romans chapter 12 is one of the three places in the New Testament that lists gifts, spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is another one, and over in Ephesians we have another one. Uh, uh, Ephesians is the, are what we call the pulpit ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Uh, over in 1 Corinthians we find the uh, gifts of the Spirit, uh, the nine gifts of the Spirit. And here in Romans chapter 12, we find what we refer to as the motivational gifts. Everybody has at least one of these. Some operate in more than one, but everybody has at least one of these. But when he leads into those particular verses, he starts off the chapter with this. And I want you to take a look here in Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. Now, what does beseech mean? Encourage, would that be uh, a a good word? I beseech you. Uh, I beseech you is a strong expression. I beseech you is not, hey, listen, if you, if you have some spare time and you can get around to it, you might want to look at this. That is not what beseech means. Beseech is, is a strong word of f- 
focus, pay attention. I encourage, I adjure you to look at this. By the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, I want you to look at something in this particular verse of Scripture here. Who does it say is supposed to present your body as a living sacrifice? It's your responsibility and it's my responsibility. Do you know you'll get in a real big argument with your spouse if you try to present their body as a living sacrifice? Yeah. You ought to try this one time just to prove this out. See, make sure I'm telling the truth. Just in a loving voice, tell your spouse, hey, listen, I've been noticing you've been putting on a few pounds there lately. Might want to take care of that. In love, say that in love, of course, not trying to be ugly. Uh, is that going to be well received? Uh, no. No. I am glad to say that I have never fallen for that trick. Because I'm a smarter man than that. I, I love my wife, and I really like it when she talks and communicates with me. And I know that very likely that expression would cut off all communication for a period of time. It would be lonely in that big house. So I have learned not to present my wife's body as a living sacrifice. I mean, you, you, you can even get in trouble, you know, saying things like, you're not going to wear that, are you? <laughs> it, just for whatever reason, it's not well received when you try to present somebody else a living sacrifice. Have you ever, it, please do not raise your hand. Those of you that are here today, please do not raise. Those of you watching on Facebook or YouTube, you don't raise your hand because I don't want to be the reason you got in trouble for the rest of the afternoon. But how many of you have ever, you've been in a, a, a position to where you, you know, you, you even think that you need to do something, but you want to get them to do it with you also? And I'm usually thinking about the category of losing weight. It just seems like this usually comes up in weight. Have you realized that you will not do something in this category, in this area of your life, you will not do something until you decide and you make the decision to do it? That somebody that keeps bringing it up to you, we call that nagging, somebody that keeps bringing that up to you over and over and you're not ready to do it, does that help? Does that encourage you? Does that just fill you with with, with all, uh, all types of motivation to accomplish this? No. As a matter of fact, if you're not careful, it'll build resentment. And, you, and, and now then, now that you've got more than one problem, now then not only do you have the problem you can't fit in your clothes, but now then you're mad at somebody. So it just, this thing starts getting worse, right? So that, this, this verse of Scripture it addresses that. You present your body a living sacrifice. Now, by the way, so, so let, now then we've, we've handled your spouse doing this for you, as in don't. But I want to look at another aspect of this. Does it say God will present your body a living sacrifice? Is the Lord supposed to present your body a living No. You ever heard anybody, have you ever heard anybody say this? Lord, I just ask right now that you take all desire of cigarettes away from me. You ever heard that? Y'all ever heard anybody do that? Lord, I just ask right now. Right, I just play. I ask you right now. I mean, they'll even invoke the name of Jesus. Lord, I just ask you right now in Jesus' name that you just, you just take away all desire for sweets out of my life right now in Jesus' name. But Lord, don't do it until I eat those Reese's cups that I got under the seat in my car until I get rid of those things. And then after that, I'm, then after that, Lord, won't you take away all desire? How many of you, don't, don't raise your hand, but just kind of think within yourself. How many of you have ever tried that? Does it work? Oh, why? Because God's not supposed to present your body as a living sacrifice. We are. As a matter of fact, 
This is the only area that we are told in the Word that we're supposed to sacrifice. This is the area that we are... God takes care of your spirit. He makes your spirit born again, made alive unto Him. It's alive. We are told to renew our mind, which if, 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 we'll, if you'll bear with me, we're actually going to get to that in this verse, um, or in this passage. We're supposed to, we renew our mind, and we are the ones that are supposed to control our body. We're the ones that are supposed to get a handle on that, presented as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. You're just supposed to do this. Verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. By the way, this is the same word transformed here that's over in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. It's metamorphosis. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove or test what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, I have even taught this this way before about the, the different types of God's will. As you look at this verse of Scripture, He's not trying to make a distinction that God has three different levels of will in your life. Okay? He's talking about the will of God. How many of you know that the will of God in your life is the same? The will of God in your life is to uh, prosper you. His, the will of God in your life is to is to give you health, is to give you a hope in a future. It's not to harm you, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us. So God desires good things for you, and He desires good things for you all the time. The, the, the part of God's will that we walk in is not determined by God, it's determined by us. How much do we want to walk in it? How much do we really want to give ourselves over to... I, I will say this, uh, one of the things that you'll find is the more that you present your body a living sacrifice, the deeper you'll walk in the will of God for your life. Because your flesh is the thing that's going to war against you. The flesh is the thing that's putting pressure on your soul to make the decision to satisfy it as opposed to your spirit trying to influence your soul to make a decision to serve the things of God. So be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I want you to notice here, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, whose responsibility is it to renew your mind? Uh, I'm sorry, but again, it's yours. It's, it's, it's our responsibility to renew our mind. See, one of the things that happens is this, and I want you to notice, remember at the first the verse, do not be conformed to this world or this world's system this world's way of thinking because this world's way of thinking the natural way of thinking in a believer's life will lead to destruction in your life so what we want to do is we want to overcome that and what happens is, is when you're born again your spirit man is made alive unto god as we mentioned before it, it is created perfectly it's made righteous because of the blood of the lord jesus but there's something that happens and that is when you're born again your soul or your way of thinking has not been renewed. So we have to learn to think the way that God thinks. If we want the results that God tells us God that we can have, then we have to think the way that He thinks. You don't naturally think that way. Everybody thinks naturally the way the world is. We have to, on purpose, change the way that we think so that we think like Him. And when we think like Him, then what it happens in us is it causes a transformation. How many of you know this? The way that you think is going to determine your course in life. Right? I mean, everything you do every day is based on the way that you think about something. Beth and I laugh at each other a lot. You know, I, I don't know what's happened over the years. But we both apparently have gotten a lot more picky in the way that we do things. I have certain forks that I like to use. I have certain forks that I cook with. Now, if you're over at my house, you don't know. But if you, and you're reaching there trying to help me, and you just pull a fork out, and I look at that fork, and I go, that's not an eating fork, that's my cooking fork. Well, you don't know which one's which, but I do. There are certain spoons in our house, little, little teaspoons, there are certain spoons in our house that I won't use. 
my little bitty wife would bring, uh, bring me a bowl of ice cream or something like that and bring one of those spoons. I'd get up, take the spoon back, go get that spoon. For... Well, now she's learned over the years. See, I know, see what y'all are thinking right now? You're thinking, well, she's learned over the years which spoon to get me. Nope, she quit bringing me ice cream. <laughs> kind of goes back to that. She goes back to her helping me present my body as a living sacrifice thing. But there's just things like we have certain ways that we do things. Now, listen, the reason that we do things a certain way in our household is because they're the right way to do them, of course. And, you know, our children think that we're picky. But what has happened is over the years, we have just learned the correct way to do stuff. That works for us. It's the way that we like to do it. It works for us. You don't have to do it that way. But you're going to find out as you get older, it was the right way to do it. Yeah. yeah. So that is good preaching right there. That's where the amen went. Right there, in case you were wondering, that's where the amen went. So we have to renew our mind to things. We have, we have to learn to develop. We have to get old habits out, and we have to renew our mind to the Word of God, and that will help us to walk in God's will. Verse 3. For I say, therefore, the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one the measure of faith. You have to be careful where this verse of Scripture is concerned about thinking of yourself more highly then you ought. James' version is uh, the doer of the word that thinks he's farther down the road than he really is. The, the, how far you're down the road is what you are willing to put to practice of the word that you know. Whatever word that you've heard, whatever word it is that you know and you put to practice, that's when you fulfill what the, the, the good part of this particular verse of Scripture and where James is concerned. So, renew your mind... Each of us need to renew our mind to the Word. And this is a constant thing. A constant process of changing the way that we think and thinking the way that God thinks about us. How many of you know, according to the Word, that God's desire for us is to have good things? If we think the way that He thinks about us, then we're going to walk in those good things. Amen? All right. All righty, we're going to close there for today. Practice renewing our minds. Hallelujah. At this time, we'd like to receive our morning tithes and offerings. If you desire an envelope this morning, envelopes are on the back of the seats in front of you. Heard somebody say the other day that those little pencils there, the only place you can find those are in church and on a golf course. So if some of you pick up your pencil and it has the name of a golf course on it, that just means we probably got it from there. <laughs> Amen. All right, those of you that hold your offering in your hand, those of you at home, participate with us. Stand up with me, please. Hold your offering in your hand. And let's say our offering confession together as i tithe and give offerings i'm believing the lord for vision and direction jobs and better jobs raises and bonuses benefits sales and commissions favorable settlements estates and inheritances interest and income rebates and returns discounts and dividends checks in the mail gifts and surprises finding money bills paid off bills decreased blessings and increase thank you lord for meeting all my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you agree with that, please say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Ushers, you may serve the people. Those of you listening out there, our desire is that God's richest and best be yours. And remember, there is victory in Jesus.